So in this segment, we'll look at an example uh, about continuous review with dynamic demand. Uh, we are going to have probabilistic demand. That means we can describe the demand using probability distributions. And our items are basically uh, going to be held across inventory cycles. So just now, our example was tires. We are selling tires. Now let's look at this example where we are selling drugs. Okay. Um, we would like to determine an inventory policy so that uh, we can achieve as low a cost as po probabilistically possible. Right? So we are given some data here in the past 10 weeks and the idea is to determine uh, a policy meaning the quantity to order and when should we order in terms of reorder point. Yeah? So we are given the cost per unit. 14% uh, annual holding cost rate, which means it's the uh, it's like a interest charge, right? Uh, that we have to pay in addition to buying the the good, which is the drug. The cost to prepare a purchase that is our setup cost. The lead time uh, is four days constant. The lead time demand, and this is the demand during the lead time. Yeah, so we need to know how does it behave probabilistically we cannot predict from day to day what will be the demand because it's not constant and it doesn't follow any formula but we know the statistical behavior and it is told to us here that it has a normal distribution with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 10. okay so uh robert wants at most a two percent probability of selling out that means probability of stock out is 2% during this lead time period. Calculate the inventory policy. So between the two numbers, how many to order and how uh, and when to order, the how many to order part is probably easier right? because that's just applying the EOQ formula. So by writing down all the um, values, Weekly average is 120, therefore annually we have 120 times 52, we have 6240 uh, cases. The ordering cost, setup cost S, the unit uh, purchase cost, that's the cost of um, a unit, multiplied by 14%, that will give us our H. Right? So using the EOQ formula, we calculated the uh, EOQ or the order quantity to be 327. 0.0649. We keep the decimal there so that when we calculate the costs, it will be more precise. Okay. Uh, of course, in reality, we can round, uh, but there's no telling whether rounding to integer makes any sense because you can say, how can we order fractional uh, drug or fractional packs of drug, right? But when you actually go to the store, maybe the packing is such that they sell in boxes and either you buy a box of 10 or you don't buy right so again it's rounding to integer making any sense then uh, 327 units cannot be purchased either you round up to 330 or you round down to 320 right so the rounding is very dependent on commercial setup uh, negotiation packaging various things so here uh, for the sake of academic um, uh, correctness let's just keep the decimal places to 4 dp and uh, perform the calculations. So next up is to determine the R, the reorder point. And to do that, we need to uh, look at the distribution, right? So lead time di distribution, lead time demand distribution is already given as uh, 80 or normally distributed. So we have D uh, of L being equal to, or, or has a distribution of normal distribution with a mean of 80 standard deviation of 10 and this distribution diagram here is showing us uh, essentially on the left side is the service level and service level is always on the left side yeah because demand falling below r is what defines as a service level 
and therefore the right side will be our stockout level. Okay, so our probability of stockout is 0 0.02. Okay. Now, um, what we need to do therefore is to find the reorder point and the reorder point in this uh, illustrated working, the calculation is done by using Z value. So the Z value for 0 0.98 is basically 2.06. Okay, so let's look at our Z value. Our Z value is going to be shown by inverse norm of 0 0.98 as before. All right, with a zero mean and standard deviation one because that's that's the standard normal uh, description. So with this, we get two point zero five uh, three seven from the table. We get two point oh six. That's fine. Let's follow two point oh six. All right, and uh, substituting in, we get reorder point being eighty plus two point oh six times ten. So we get one zero one case. So. Uh, if we still have 103 cases in our warehouse, we don't order. If we buy another 10, then yes, we cross the 101 line and we should reorder by calling up the supplier. How many is the safety stock? Well, that's going to be Z times Sigma. So that is our uh, multiplication here, 2.06 times 10. So that's 20.6 uh, rounding to 21 cases. Okay. All right. What about the costs? So using the formula that we worked out earlier, we are just going to basically plug in to our formula. Our annual ordering cost, annual setup cost will be 229. Our annual holding cost for cycle stock, the part of the reorder point inventory, that is meant for sale, that is meant to meet the average demand, is going to be $229. Now, they are equal, not because by chance, but it is meant to be because we are using EOQ. So the annual setup cost and the annual holding cost for cycle stock will always be the same. That's how EOQ uh, quantity formula was being derived. How about the annual holding cost for safety stock? And that is just plugging into formula. We went through the rational just now. And that's going to be $29. Adding them up will give us $487. All right, so that rounds up the example for continuous review with dynamic demand.